Hello, today I'm going to be talking about light, or more specifically, what light is. A wave or a particle? Nowadays, we recognize that sometimes light can behave as a wave and sometimes light can behave as a particle, but that was not always common knowledge. Now, this debate started long ago in the 17th century, as Sir Isaac Newton thought that light was a particle and Christian Huygens thought that light was a wave. So, what's going on? So before we start talking about wave-particle duality, let's talk about the characteristics of waves and particles. So first off, if a particle hits a barrier, it will not be able to go through. But as you can see with the wave, it will be able to go through the center and around the sides of the barrier. Also, a particle will only impact at a single point, while a wave will impact at multiple points. Now we know about waves and particles, we can talk about Young's double slit experiment. So in Young's double slit experiment, there was a wall with two slits cut through it, and behind that, there was a background. And as you can see, when particles are shot at it, they will only impact directly behind where the slits are. However, when a wave is shot at, you will see that it will separate into two separate waves. And these waves sometimes overlap or interfere. I've marked those with black dots. And as you can see behind it, it forms interference pattern. Now this is what interference patterns actually look like. And those ridges are actually the points where the waves have overlapped or interfered. And I was able to recreate this very easily by just holding three pieces of pencil that very close to each other. And then, by shining a laser in between them in a dark room a couple feet away, I was able to produce that interference pattern that you just saw. So in addition to Young's double slit experiment, there's also Maxwell's equations. Now Maxwell's equations explain the interactions between electric fields and magnetic fields. And together, these describe how light can behave and how it can act both as a wave and as a particle. So now let's go over the four laws. Now Guess's law explains how a magnetic field is proportional to the charge of a surface. Second, we have Guess's law for magnetism. Now Guess's law for magnetism says that the total magnetic flux, or the amount of magnetic field, is on a closed surface, which is a surface without any boundaries at all, is going to be equal to zero. Next, we have the Maxwell-Faraday equation, which explains that the path of a magnetic field in a closed loop is equal to the negative of the magnetic field. And finally, we have Ampere circuit law. Now this explains that the electrical currents are proportional to the magnetic field. Now altogether, these equations show how light can sometimes act as an electromagnetic wave and how light can sometimes act as a particle. So the next piece of evidence in wave particle duality is the photoelectric effect. And pretty much it describes how if photons of light hit a metal surface, that a couple stray electrons will fly off. Now, in this experiment, you think that all sorts of electromagnetic uh, radiation could knock off electrons from the metal. However, this is not the case. Only certain frequencies of light will be able to knock off particles off pieces of metal. And the frequency at which light will be able to knock off electrons is dependent on the metal. So let's take a look at an example of the photoelectric experiment and what would happen. So as you can see, first off, we have a photon of red light. When that photon of red light is released, nothing happens. And it doesn't matter if we have one photon or a bunch of photons. Still, nothing will happen. So now if we try the experiment with a green photon of light, as it hits the metal, an electron will fly off. And again, if this happens with a bunch of photons, the electrons will still fly off with the same amount of intensity. So it doesn't matter if it's the dimmest green light ever or the brightest green light ever. So now if we try the experiment with a blue photon of light, we can see that when it hits the metal, it will fly off with a lot of force. And again, it doesn't matter if it's being hit with one photon or a bunch, it will still fly off with that same amount of energy. So the final piece of evidence that we have for wave particle duality is the de Broglie hypothesis. And essentially what the French scientist de Broglie did was he took Einstein's E equals mc squared, which talks about the relationship between matter and energy. And then from there, he took Planck's constant, which describes how every single wave will have a certain amount of energy in it. And from there, he came up with this equation, describing how every single form of matter can sometimes act as a wave. And of course, this includes light. And the only language that can really truly describe the de Broglie hypothesis is mathematics. It can't really be described in the English language. We can't really comprehend how something can act as a particle and a wave at the same time. We just know that it can, thanks to this math. So in conclusion, light is something that seems so simple, so rudimentary, and so basic on the outside. But when we really look into it, and we really study it, 
we can see that there's a whole lot more to it that we never would have expected. Just like Einstein put it, separately, neither of them fully explain the phenomena of light, but together, they do. Thanks.